What is up, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. And we want to start off by saying thank you. You guys have been amazing. And this has been an incredible year. I have had an absolute blast with all of you out there. Uh, Got to meet a ton of our viewers. And it's been a wonderful year. 2021 has been a great year for changes and for experience and we had a blast on the channel and we want to thank you guys for that first and foremost um, there are too many people out there to thank individually i know we would leave someone out so from us to you all of our influencers um, all of our friends the people that interact with us on a daily basis in the comments and in the messages we want to thank you guys, uh, and you guys are the ones that we're here for, and you guys are the ones that make this job so much fun, and we want to thank you, first and foremost, for a wonderful year. It's been amazing, and and, and that's all thanks to you guys. Now, this video, I'm sure you read the title, is going to be my picks. So, we did a 2021 bestsellers list, and that's where we had no, like, that was no opinion at all it was just literally we went down the sheet and looked at our top brands and then we looked at our top sellers in general this is going to be my picks and i, I was trying to come up with a format to do this so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do my favorite fixed blade my favorite traditional folder my favorite modern folder my favorite collectible and then I'm gonna do an overall favorite maybe uh, and th this is kind of like choosing my kids so uh, I might throw in two or three overall favorites uh, that I carry on a regular basis so I've got my collection here that I acquired this year so this is just gonna be from 2021 not from previous years uh, from old collection this is just gonna be from 2021 and the things that I bought myself this year and what I've carried. So this is going to be kind of like the ultimate pocket dump of 2021 for TC. So uh, before we get started, though, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell so you will know when we drop new videos and show you really cool stuff and tell you what we've enjoyed carrying. So without further ado, let's light it up. Now, I know I said I was going to have five knives up here, and I just went through everything and uh, all the knives that I've required, and uh, I couldn't pick just five. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep the same categories, fixed blade, traditional folder, modern folder, collectible, and overall. And for each one of those categories, I'm going to have a favorite, and then I'm going to have an honorable mention. And then off to the side, I've got my most carried knives outside of those favorites from each category. So the knives that I've carried the most overall this year. So let's get right into it. We don't want to make this too long and drawn out. I'm just going to go through these quickly because these, I mean, these are my favorites. So I'm going to explain to you what I like about them and give you a little bit of uh, information about them in case you're uh, interested in them. But uh, for fixed blade, my favorite overall has been this Bradford right here. This has been uh, the one that I've carried the most and I've really enjoyed it. Um, Unfortunately, since losing my uh, Ezzy Zancudo, uh, I needed something to replace it with, and this is what I come up with. So this is a very small, unobtrusive, um, great EDC fixed blade right here. No handles, so it's nice and skeletonized. It's nice and lightweight. L-Max blade steel, which I really like. Um, it's, it's not terribly difficult to sharpen, and that's a nice thick chunk of LMAX. We're going to take a look at that one up close right there. And um, really dig this one. And great sheath. I put one of my belt clips on it, and it just clips right onto the belt. Uh, this is the Bradford G Necker Nimbus coming in at $99.99. So just under $100 for a great LMAX blade steel uh, fixed blade right here. 
Uh, it's 2.87 inch uh, L Max steel drop point blade uh, with, and this is with the Nimbus finish. Uh, I really like this finish. We've got them in two other finishes as well, all under a hundred bucks. Black Kydex sheath, six inches overall, and only 2.7 ounces. Um, really dig that thing. It fits really nice in the hand. Ergonomically, it's really good. Um, so yeah, really like that one. That's my favorite. Uh, fixed blade for the year. Honorable mention goes to CRKT Minimalist. And this is the one that I carried the next most this year. Um, I really dig this one. This is our exclusive. This is the black stone wash finish. We've also got this one in the light stone wash finish. We're out of the black right now. But um, as of right now, I believe this one's on sale. But this is our exclusive. And uh, I, I really like this one. D2 Steel, which uh, is an upgraded blade steel for this one, coming in at $29.99. And uh, a 2.13 inch D2 tool steel clip point blade with the stone wash finish. Uh, this came originally with the tan micarta handles. I switched it out for the G10 handles that came out on our exclusive uh, cleaver that I really enjoyed too. So, uh, and actually, I'm going to include all of the CRKT minimalist that I uh, that I bought this year for myself. Um, I bought three or four of them for myself, and really dig all of them. Um, great sheath. I added a Civivi belt clip to it, so it just comes open, clips right on, really easy, in and out. So really digging that one. That's my honorable mention for my favorite uh, fixed blade knife. Now, for my favorite traditional folder, this one's kind of interesting. And uh, I can, with my honorable mentions in this, it really shows just how much I love this traditional folder pattern. Let's take a look at this one up close. This is my GEC Seahorse Whittler. And uh, this, is, this has definitely been one of my favorites uh, throughout the year. Really love this thing. Uh, this, is from, uh, this is from their Northfield line and uh seahorse whittler pattern really love that with the carbon steel blade 1095 carbon steel blade uh jig bone handles um i'm a huge gec fan anyways uh and then when they come out with this one i, I had to get my hands on it somehow so uh i tracked this one down and really really love those jig bone handles and love that seahorse whittler pattern <clears throat> so that's another one of my favorites right there I do carry it. I do use it. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be mad over that. Um, but, uh, I mean, all of my knives are users. All of my knives I carry. Honorable mentions for the traditional folder category are going to be a couple of them, actually. Um, first up is going to be another Seahorse Whittler, and this is a case. This one actually uh, come to me by way of Clip Point Greg from the clip point channel he's one of our influencers and uh, he got this one on case president's day for me and gave it to me and this has been one of my best users that i've got i mean i love this thing and uh again love this pattern i can't tell you how many times i've talked to mari ford about uh asking if case would do more seahorse whittlers because i absolutely love this pattern i think it's one of the most useful knives that i own and for me personally this one comes in at 79.99 has the true sharp surgical steel blades uh the black micarta handles we've got them in a couple of different versions uh, we've got the red synthetic, I believe, uh, as well as maybe one other one, um, but a, a couple of different micarta handles in this Seahorse Whittler pattern, and I just really, really dig them. I like the Warncliffe blade. I like the coping blade and the pin blade. Um, I think it's it's one of the most useful patterns uh, overall um, that is made, and I just I love those things. So <clears throat> that's uh, an honorable mention in my traditional folder category, and I couldn't get away without one more honorable mention uh, in that category that I really, really love, and that's my Rough Rider Copper Swirl Canoe. This one's a great conversation piece, and everybody loves it whenever I pull this one out to use it. Half stops, um, canoe pattern, which I really love, and also this one's got the long match strike pulls. Um, I really love the long pulls on all of these traditional patterns. I, I just think it looks classy. I also like the copper swirl, and I like the copper bolsters. I love the patina. As you can see, uh, if we look at this one up close, um, you can see that I've actually used this one. And um, it is not as bright and shiny as uh, 
the photo online would be or as they come new out of the box. But um, that's what I love about it. I love the patina that it gets. This one comes in at fourteen ninety nine, and you just can't beat that. 448 stainless steel blades. And uh, I, I love a canoe pattern. So <clears throat> that's my honorable mentions for the traditional folder. Now let's get into my favorite modern folder. And uh, first up, uh, and this is going to be one of my more carried knives, uh, I, I guess one of my more fidget-friendly knives. I couldn't come up with a favorite in this one. It was way too difficult, uh, too many options. Um, but one of my favorites overall has been the Civivi Odium, and I love the fidget factor of this knife. I know a lot of people out there are going to say, well, that really shouldn't matter. It does to me because I do fidget with my knives a lot, um, especially working here. I mean, knives are my job. So I, I fidget a lot and uh, really, really dig this knife. Let's take a look at that one up close. Now, uh, like I said, this has been one of my favorites because of the fidget factor and because of what it is and the value that it is. This one comes in at 5270. I got the Jade G10. Um, they came in, uh, and I think we're sold out of these right now, but they came in black, blue, and I want to say purple maybe. Also has the Jade G10 backspacer right there. Um, D2 tool steel, 2.65 inch D2 tool steel drop point blade with the stone wash finish. And this is a Ferrum Forge collaboration. And you can see um, the Ferrum Forge influence on this. And I, I really love this knife. I love the finger choil. Um, I, I love the way it fits in the hand uh, either way, even without using the finger choil. Uh, the action on it is very snappy. It's got the flipper, but it's also got the thumb hole that is very easy to flick. And uh, just, just really dig that knife there. Now, uh, also in that, in that same category, I, I really dig this one just as much. And this is the Civivi Appalachian Drifter 2. Um, love, love, love this knife. I love the exaggerated clip point blade. Let's take a look at that one up close. Now this one's coming in uh, at 9350 and the thing that I love about this one is it's under $100 and it's a premium blade steel. S35 VN blade steel, brown burlap micarta handles with the carbon fiber bolsters. It's got the long pull on it and uh, with it being a modern folder, it looks very traditional um, but with the action of a modern folder. Really, really dig that thing. This one is also a front flipper. You can see the flipper tab right there and so there we go and really dig the fidget factor on this one too also really cool to note the integrated lanyard loop right there in the backspacer and being able to get s35 vn blade steel on a on a knife uh, under a hundred dollars i think that's a great deal love that one as an honorable mention i have to go with my benchmade bug out uh, this thing is awesome. I really dig this. Uh, Tyler really hit this one out of the park. Um, him and Josh asking for this one. Really love this bug out, and it has been a great one for us. Let's take a look at that one up close. These are coming in at 212, coming in with M4 blade steel, uh, which is an upgrade. Um, CPM M4 is a great blade steel. And also with the upgraded G10 over FRN handles, still super lightweight, but incredibly durable. Um, also with the access lock that everybody knows and loves, and this thing is phenomenal. Really dig this thing. It disappears in the pocket. Nice deep carry pocket clip. That is ambidextrous with the ambidextrous access lock and ambi thumb studs. That also makes it very fidgety too, which I really dig. You all know that I really dig fidgety knives, so... That's going to be my honorable mention for a modern folder. Now, we get into the interesting ones, for me anyways, um, because I am also a collector. <clears throat> now, I know you're going to say, well, you showed me your GEC and you use that. that you can't collect it and use it. Well, yeah. I do have some that I collect and I don't use them. I don't carry them. And uh, my, my, my favorite collector that I got this year is going to be my Tony Bowes. Uh, this is our President's Day knife 
that we had here at SMKW, and this is the Tony Bowes saddle horn. Let's take a look at that one up close here. Um, really dig this one, and and the reason why this one made my favorite, um, what really pushed it over the edge. Number one, it's a Tony Bowes. Number two, it's limited run. There were only a hundred of these made, um, and as a Tony Bowes collaboration. And three, the saddle horn. It, everybody knows that saddle horn is is one of Tony Bowes favorites uh, as far as patterns, but also me being uh, you know a horseman and and loving riding that much, uh, it, it just made it that much more special to me. And uh, just really really love this knife. This is number thirty five out of a hundred, and uh, you can see the Tony Bowes signature right there love 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 this pattern love the swedging on the blade i just think it's gorgeous and i love the olive green jig bone uh, on the handle there now as an honorable mention for my collectible it's going to go to the remington bullet knife that we had made this year and gec made these for us they're absolutely beautiful love the jig bone handles on those this is a trapper pattern and uh, i love the fact that the remington bullet knife is coming back and especially with such good quality um coming from gec i mean they did a fantastic job for us um getting these knives made it's got the 2021 on the spade blade right there and uh really really dig these things and uh, they did a phenomenal job love love that knife right there now here we go into um my favorites overall and my two favorites overall, uh, my favorite knife is going to be the Mini Adamas. Um, I waited for a really long time for this one because we sold out of these so fast at the beginning of the year, and I was not on top of it. And, uh, you know, wanted to let everybody else get their shot at it. And so we sold out of these, had a really hard time. Mm, excuse me. We sold out of these, had a really hard time getting them back in, and when we finally did, I got one. I had been waiting on it for a really long time, really wanted it, and was not disappointed. Seabird did a fantastic job designing this one. Let's take a look at that one. Now, uh, like I said, this is a Seabird design. This is the Benchmade Mini Adamas Adamas, however you want to say it. FDE. I love that, that color scheme, and it goes really nicely with the bug out as well. Um, love those two. Uh, the OD green G10 handles with the uh, Cerakoted blade right there. Absolutely beautiful. Axis lock, and this thing is definitely a heavy duty knife. It's nice and thick, but, and I love what Tom, Too Tall Tom, said um, to me one day. He's our buyer for Benchmade. And he was like, you know, holding that mini Adamas is like shaking your best friend's hand. It just fits in the hand. Um, Ambi pocket clip coming in at 212.50. And uh, really, really love that knife. That's, that's one of my most carried knives right there. I carry it a lot and use it a lot. Um, also, uh, among my favorites this year and, and most used has been my Leatherman Free P4. Um, really digging that one. Of course, most of you know that I did some uh, I did some modifications to it. Um, I added some some thumb studs there to the blades. Uh, also added an adapter uh, to mine so that I could use the uh, ratchet tool, um, the ratchet driver. And uh, I carry this every day, and I use it just about every day. I use the ratchet driver uh, more than I use anything else on this multi tool and really dig that thing so those are my favorites now we're going to move on and we're going to show four of my most carried knives this year and uh first and foremost is going to be uh, my Pena way back and for those of you that don't remember we did a really funny really fun video um for the release of this Pena way back only a hundred of them made um, really love this knife. Let's take a look at that one up close now. You'll notice this one's a little bit different. It, it comes with the um, bead blasted titanium hardware. What I did was I took mine apart and I had the guys in the custom shop polish all my titanium hardware and then Entropic finish it. 
Um, they wanted to do some experimenting, and I said, you know what? Why not? Go ahead and take my Pena and uh, do some experimentation on that. So they did and did a phenomenal job. I really love how that turned out right there. And uh, beautiful knife. I carry it quite a bit and uh, really, really dig that knife. Also on my most carried list is going to be my MKM Isanzo. And I have gravitated this year towards, and, and usually what I'll do and I know a lot of people out there are going to think it's excessive. Um, knife guys are not. Knife guys are going to understand. But I usually carry my fixed blade. I have a big folder. And I have a little folder for different types of jobs. And uh, I'm really digging the little folders a lot. Um, I like them in my that fifth pocket carry usually. Um, and this has been one of my favorites, of course, uh, fat carbon. This is our exclusive M390 blade steel. Let's take a look at that one up close. This is with the black finish on the blade and the hardware. And, uh, this is with the M390 blade steel coming in at 150, I believe it is, um, 149.99 yeah 150 so 3.47 inches close 5.83 inches overall 2.82 ounces um love the thumb hole makes it very fidgety right there um also love the lanyard loop on the back end and how generous and big it is you can actually see i haven't cleaned this and you can see the the pocket lint and stuff right there from me carrying it and uh so i mean i do carry these things folks they don't just sit in a box um also on my list of most carried is going to be uh my bounty hunter exoset from microtech I uh, really love that thing, and you all have probably seen this one. I've, I've shown it uh, a lot of times on the channels, um, but this one was actually made last year. I bought it at the beginning of this year and really, really love this knife. Uh, Bladed Ginger made the lanyard for me and to go along with it and had it uh, laser engraved at our custom shop with the Mandalorian helmet, and this is the way. And uh, just really, really love this knife. Love the money clip aspect of it. And, I mean, it's just a really, really cool knife. Really cool knife. And uh, one of my favorites that I bought. And uh, the other one is going to be my absolute most carried knife this year, especially since it came out because I've carried it almost every day. And that's going to be my CRKT uh, Compact Provoke right here. And absolutely love this knife. Um, this is just a, a really cool design and a lot of people, I don't think give it enough credit for it actually being a useful knife. Um, granted it does come across as a self-defense tool, but I think I would, I, I would venture to say, and I, I would implore you to look at this as a actual useful tool. I actually use this. I don't just carry this for, uh, you know, protection or anything like that. I actually do use this as a pocket knife um, and really dig this knife. Let's take a look at that one up close right there. Now, this is the compact version of the Provoke that CRKT just came out with this year. This is $149.99 D2 tool steel on the blade. Of course, the uh, Joe Case well design on that kinematic technology uh, opening right there, which is really cool. So most karambit style blades that are folders are going to be folded up around into here so to actually deploy it you're going to have to get your fingers out of the way and deploy it and then try to not let it fall out of your hand and get your hands back around it and now you can have it like on your finger like that but that's still not going to be comfortable and not going to be completely safe this method you simply just put your thumb on the jimping right there and push that blade open it locks into place. The locking mechanism is right back here. Locks into place. And at that point, it's not going anywhere. It has no play whatsoever. And, uh, I mean, it's a, extremely comfortable in the hand. And at that point, you can actually switch it around, put your pinky through the hole, and hold it like this and use it as a traditional hawkbill knife. Uh, I think that's just phenomenal. And uh, I love that it's D2. D2's... I guess I would have to say one of my favorite blade steels overall. I love D2. Uh, it's phenomenal. It does everything that I want it to do. Sharpens up nice and easy. Um, really dig it. So 
that's going to be my favorites. That's my picks on the year. I know I said I was going to do five. I got a little long winded, uh, but I had to do I had to do some honorable mentions in there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys liked all these picks. Let us know in the comments down below what your picks from the year were, and use all five of those categories if you want to. Um, fixed blade, traditional, modern, uh, collectible, and favorite overall. Let us know in the comments down below what you pick for this year. Folks, as always, it's been me here, TC, with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. And remember, folks, if it cuts like your favorite knife of the year, then we carry What is up? What is up?